All those who are viewing this, this morning, all the family, I sincerely have wish that you all could have been here, but circumstances have needed. Everybody know that true as a result of this COVID, there's only a few could be here. However, we wish to give John a proper send off this morning. And I hope that you will continue watching until program is end. Thank you.
But nevertheless, we are gathered here this morning to say farewell to our brother, our friend, our father, husband, whatsoever, our loved one, John Granger. And so this morning, as we come together, it's not just to say goodbye because we know that one day we are going to meet with him again, right? But it is just to say farewell, because he has taken the journey before us, and we expect that one day we will meet him again, all right? So let's all stand as we open in a word of prayer. Father, we praise you, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for your divine presence here this morning. You said where the twos and trees are gathered in your name. There you are in the midst of them. And so, Father, we welcome your presence here this morning. And we thank you, God, because you are God and there is none else. And so, in the name of Jesus, we pronounce, O oh God, a blessing upon each and every one that is present this morning. Each and every one, O oh God, that is hearing our voice this morning that follow us. On, on Lord, on the, the media, whatever device. Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, is there anyone who can sing just start with this amazing grace for us? We are having some problem with the system, and we unfortunately do not. about I have always known him to be the same person he was even until death. John was always a friendly person. Since coming to know him, he I don't even know where exactly he came from, but since coming to Todd Road where I reside, John and my family became very close. And John is a person he is never offended because John always has a smile on his face. You can tell John what you want, you could do John what you want, and John always have a great John, I need a help to do so and so. You're sure one person will be there is John. So John has always had, as far as I know, a very pleasant personality. 
he has always been friendly with everyone because he has come into Todd's Road and he fit in like he has been there for years, like he was born in Todd's Road. And everybody, I believe, in Todd's Road know John. So the sentiments I echo this morning is on behalf in the village. There is so much more I can say about him, but I would not take that time at this time because we are running late. So, um, and let's see what we have next on the, the program. Right, we are going to open the floor now. You can have your seat. And we are going to open the floor now for just five minutes. If there is anyone who want to say anything about John, feel free. The rest of us, we, we can say. Okay. Good morning. I'm John Miss, and my uncle was always a bright, sprightly person. And even though me and my mother had a quarrel, she does, he does always want Aisha to take she on. And he just starts to laugh. He always laughs at everything. You know what I miss him for? Every time I have a service, he does be there. If I've been a press, he there. He always there. When everybody running, he there. So I will miss him for that. And he's he right now he right now he's with his mother. He's with his mother at the same way as the time to see. And he's safe, he's highly blessed, and he's fully favored. He God himself asking no questions. He's in the gate. And I thank Jesus for having an uncle who always have a smile. Well, you have a blessed morning, eh? Anyone else? Well, I hope I'm the last on the floor. I am John Ellis Brown. And one sad thing about life is in the sense that I hardly had spent time with him. But the little I knew him was just as the pastor that I always to him. He never but many people interpreted him as being dotish not recognizing that John was what God had intended people to be. He never turned a bad face. And I want to add that I am very sad of the occasion in the senses that for years I never had contact with John. And when my sister called and told me John was it, I was making it my duty to go and visit him. As a matter of fact, the first thing the Lord told me to do is go and pray with him at the hospital. Because of the situation we are in now, I could not have gone in and seen him because one person was entitled to visit him. And I am very, very sorry and saddened that I never had that opportunity. One of the things I would say, and I thank God that John met a person, which is his wife, that truly, truly showed John love. Because the time that I have met John while he was associated with is Giselle, Giselle. There was always a happy face with him that I know he never expressed by the fact. And I hope to God that while he is here, that certain individuals ask the Lord to forgive them for never treating John as a relative. We know that if only God can forgive right now because John has passed away. And that is the end of John. However, we thank the Lord that for the little time that we have had, 
we have known him, and I thank the Lord for the individual and the character that he was. I would say that he had a better attitude and character than I even had. And just as I said, he was a man that was loved by everybody who met him and took time to know him. Online is that. that have been echoed. John truly was a real nice person. So, right, and we are going to read from the book of John, his name, John. John chapter, if you have your Bibles, you can follow with me. John chapter 12, and I'm beginning to read from verse 23. And Jesus answered, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But this, for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God to us this morning. And... We are here this morning because John decided to leave us. Now, we know that John was not sick for any length of time. Right? He just took in and within a matter of days, out of here. Right? You know, like some people will say, Today you are here. God. But the scripture puts it like this in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, and verse 27. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. So, what the word of God is telling us here this morning is that every one of us, whether we are rich or poor, whether we are short or tall, whether we are black or or white, whichever country we were born into, it does not matter. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. So it's not something that any of us could escape. It is not something that any of us is exempted from. 
Amen. This is a road that we all have to walk one day. And some are fearful of death. Some, when they only hear the word death, they become so timid, so fearful that they begin to shiver. But as believers, as children of God, those of us who know Jesus Christ, we have nothing to fear. Because the word of God says here, as we read just now in the book of John chapter 12, and this verse 24 tells us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. Now John, being the person that he was, he himself was an agriculture, agriculturist. Oh. He planted garden. He knew about gardening. He, he was one who I knew planted peas. And they sold peas. So he knew very well. If you take a grain of peas and put it in your cupboard, put it in your drawer, put it away. It remains there. And you check that one week later, you check it one month after, you check it one year after, it remains a grain of corn. It remains there forever. And it's of no use to anyone. But he knows very well if you take that grain of corn and put it into the uh, uh, peas and put it into the ground, you look at it one week after and you see a little seedling. And then he will come and nurture it. If it needs water, he water it. Put a little fertilizer and so on. And within a couple of months, that one grain of corn bring forth thousands of grains. So that is telling us here that as the scripture says, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. Sowing and reaping was all about. He understood when you sow a grain of, of peas into the ground, that one grain bring forth thousands of grains. Right? So that is telling us, the principle there is telling us that there is victory in debt. That is telling us that there are benefits in death. So as believers, we should not fear death. Amen. We should not fear death. We should not be afraid when we he even hear the word death. In the book of Job chapter 14 and verse 1, the Bible says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days full of trouble. Man that is born of a woman is there anyone here this morning or is there anyone at the sound of our, our, our voice who has not been born of a woman? The Bible says man that is born of a woman. We were all born of a woman. Amen. So it means then that none of us is exempted here. And the word of God declares that man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. So John decided, listen, I have had enough and I am about to leave this place. I am ready to take my exit out of this troubled world that we are living in today. Some of us are fearful of this COVID-19, this coronavirus that we hear that is taking over the world by storm today. Amen. But John decided. Job continued in that very same chapter, in chapter 14, Job chapter 12, sorry, and down to verse 14, he asked the question, when a man died, Shall he live again? Shall he live again? That was the question that Job asked. And I am going to attempt to answer that question for us this morning. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Wherefore, as by man, as by one man, 
sin came into the world and death by sin. We understand that the word of God declares through the obedience of one, sin, or the disobedience of one, that's Adam, the first Adam, by, by the disobedience of one, sin entered into the world and death by sin because the word of God declares the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But it did not stay there. It went on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life. So just as by the disobedience of one, sin came into the world and death was passed on to all men, so too because of the obedience of one, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who came and took our place and died in our stead. He died in our place. He died that we might have life. The book of Romans 6 and 23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God that, like the question Job asked, when a man died, shall he live again? Now we need to understand something that we are seeing this box here, we are seeing this body here this morning. But what we are seeing this morning is not John. John is not lying in this coffin. We need to understand that what we are seeing here is just the house that John lived in. But John has already taken his exit. John has already gone. Amen. And we cannot be the judge of him to say where he has gone. Amen. We do not know. Maybe, remember the thief on the cross? When he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus replied to him, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Amen. So it's never too late with God. It's never too late with Jesus. On your dying bed, you can say, God, forgive me. And the kind of God that I know is the one who will forgive us. Amen. It's the one who will remember us. It's the one who will put us back together again. Amen. That's the God that I know. So we should not be the judge over him as to what type of life he lived and what he did and what he did not do. Leave that to God. Amen. Leave that to God. But the reason why we are here today is because we should make an examination of our own life. Amen. Amen. We still have time. And because we have time, because we are here, because we have life, we have choices to make. And I urge you this morning, everyone, at the sound of my voice, do not wait until it's too late. Do not wait until it's too late. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 15, the word of God declares, See, I have set before thee this day. Today, tomorrow, come back tomorrow, come back next week. I will do this next week. But today, the word of God declares, See, I have set before you this day. Which day? Today. Right now. Good and evil. Blessings and cursings. Life and death. He says, these things are before you today. And he is saying to us, the choice is yours. You Make that choice. You make that choice. He says, but i rather that you choose life. i rather that you choose life over death. i rather that you choose good over evil. 
I rather that you choose blessings over cursing, but still the choice is yours. It ends with you. When the rubber hits the road, it is between you and God, no one else. We cannot blame anyone for our salvation. I want to close this morning, but in closing, I want to give us the opportunity. The word of God says, you choose. So I want to give us the opportunity this morning, before we walk out of this building, because as I said earlier, no man knows the time or the hour. Right? No man knows when his number is going to call. Right? But before we leave, everyone should have the opportunity to make it right with God. Amen? Amen. You have that choice to make this morning. The word of God declares, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear and open, I will come in and sup with him. And as we said earlier, the Bible says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. And God, the word of God says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We all this morning can enjoy eternal life. Amen. Amen. We all have that opportunity. If we would just pray this prayer together, or you can repeat after me. Let's just pray. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. We give you thanks. Lord, we thank you for sending your son Jesus into this world to die in our place. And so, Father, as we come before you this morning, we bow our heart in repentance before you. And that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we pray that purposes would be accomplished in and through our lives. And so we ask again that you forgive us, Lord. If we have wronged any man, forgive us, Jesus. Forgive us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. All right, we are going to sing the next song there. What a friend we have in Jesus. So let's stand as we sing. What a friend we have in Jesus. Who will start it for us? What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, no.
Praise God. Praise God. Father, we praise you. We give you thanks. And you will answer us. We thank you, Lord, because you are a God that is touched with the very feeling of infirmities. Father, you never leave us comfortless. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you this morning, O oh God, I lift up this, the family of John Granger, in your family. Father, I thank you that even this treatment will comfort them. Father, they will remember that they have a friend in Jesus. That they can call upon you day and night, and you will never ever turn your back upon them. But our Father, you will fear them. That, oh God, you will be a friend to them. You will be a brother to them, oh God. And so, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you will bring a peace of mind, oh God. And help them, oh God, to understand. That our loved one is in a better place, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, comfort them. Comfort them, O oh God, with the words that you said, O oh God, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so, in the name of Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that you will cover them under your precious blood. I pray, God, that you will watch over them, O oh God. I pray, God, that you will fill that void that was left, O oh God, because of that loss in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you will bless them. Bless them, O oh God, spiritually, financially, emotionally, and every area of their lives this morning, I declare them blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right, so we are on time. So at this time, we will have the viewing of the body, and then we are going to proceed to the cemetery. Thank you so very much. God bless you.
Dạ. Ada kata? Okay. Lepas mana?
Everybody had the chance to see everybody happy? We could close. Let's go. as much as it had pleased Almighty God to take out of this world our deceased friend, brother, husband, father, John Granger. We commit his body to Mother Earth, Earth to Earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come throughout our Lord Jesus Christ and whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world and the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things under himself. Let's just pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's commit the body to the ground. You can give us an
Shot man, unknown. John, boy. I the best of his friend, schoolmate. Mm -hmm. Sit on in chair together, drink together, do everything together. When I heard the news, I saw the fight here. Best friend, brother, everything in one. Then play football together, right? Hi, far. The better man will have soon. The way you aim in a fight, get in. Voilà, I fought! They come here and you running down the place, boy. They come in and call me, boy. You ready to go? Best footballer. Bone. There was a tree to the bone, boy. Anyway, go in and go with your flag. You don't play mass and free power, I give you everything we used to do.
Thank you. 